Tonight, People's Democratic Party holds its national convention in Abuja. Leaders say event signals the relaunching of the party into reckoning. Police kill five gunmen after attempting to attack the Anambra State Joint Security Forces during a show of force in the Demili South local government area. Outrage trails siege to the Abuja home of Supreme Court Justice Mary Odili, Attorney General and Minister of Justice denies involvement as Nigerian Bar Association vows to take action. And three people shot dead as thousands of people protest Monday's military coup, demanding a return to a civilian government in Sudan. On business news tonight, Nigeria's stock market gains over 960 billion naira in October as month and year to date performance climbs above 4% each. After much anticipation and legal battle, it's now D-Day as thousands of delegates to the People's Democratic Party National Convention are today at the Eagle Square in Abuja, electing officials who will pilot the affair of the party going forward. The party believes this convention will help consolidate its mission to rescue Nigeria from the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. Speaking before the convention started, top leaders of the party, including former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, delivered speeches and expressed optimism that the event affords members another chance to relaunch the PDP to reckoning. Our correspondent Terry Kumi has this report. In what appears to be a peaceful and colorful event, the main opposition People's Democratic Party is holding its national convention. But beyond the elections, the speeches here from the leaders suggest that they are confident of a united party that will win the 2023 elections. The national convention is regarded as perhaps the most important moment to take tangible decisions that will affect a political party. This is highlighted by the chairman of the National Convention Committee in his welcome address as he reveals that 21 positions are to be filled, with most of them having consensus candidates. The choices before us have been made easier by the power of consensus, which is an integral part of our processes. That most of the positions have emerged with single contestants is not only a pointer to our bond of familyhood, but a demonstration of our entrenched democratic culture and strength determined to soldier on in unison. The event is declared open by the acting national chairman who is confident of victory at the polls come 2023. Today, that the leadership of our party will emerge. And by the grace, by the grace of Almighty God, his belief in the strength of the party is shared by the chairman of the PP Governors Forum. There are people that are working to present us as weak and in disarray, but I'm happy to report that, contrary to the naysayers, the PDP today is the strongest and most cohesive party in Nigeria. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and PDP leaders in the National Assembly point accusatory fingers at the ruling party, believing that the PDP would rescue Nigerians from what they describe as mass failure. The NPC has proven itself to be in a quick to meet the nation. They have shown themselves to be corrupt, in fact, the most corrupt party in that was never prepared this fearless government of APC is doing nothing but continue to find excuses and gloat as bandits take over our highways as terrorists plunder our communities and innocent school children are used as bait and kidnapped for ransom within the corporate uh, country of Nigeria. The party then adopts all the congresses held across the country as voting commences with over 3,500 registered members and is expected to run into Sunday. 
The People's Democratic Party is satisfied with the successful process so far and is hopeful that this would lead to victory at the polls in 2023. Terry Hikumi, Channels Television News. For some of the PDP delegates, the decision for consensus candidates to fill most of the vacancies indicates unity in the party, despite the internal crisis that led to the suspension of the PDP national chairman, Mr. Uche Sekondus. 34 aspirants indicated interest to contest the 21 vacant positions at the party's national headquarters, but only two of these positions are being contested at the convention. <laughs> In what appears like a carnival of some sort, members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, converged on the Eagle Square in Abuja for a national convention to elect principal officers for the party. The heavy presence of security officials at the entrance, trying to screen delegates before entering, but they seem to be overwhelmed by a crowd who thronged the arena. 3,600 delegates from 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory sit in their respective positions as they await the commencement of an exercise they believe defines the party's course for the 2023 general election. What the PDP stands for is for building a foundation where we are working together to ensure that we are able to rescue the nation back and then see how we can get to the new version because a lot has been done to destroy the soul of this country. The PDP is taking this sense to rebuild the party and to take over governance. I want to give it to the PDP, my party, for the well-organized uh, convention. And it is my belief that uh, by the time we are done with this session today and then bring out these leaders that will man the affairs of the party in the next four years, they will in turn, you know, work very hard and then produce acceptable president for this country. The suffering for the people of Nigeria has come to an end by this action today, by this national convention that is to produce a credible leadership that will give us a credible candidate that will win election come 2023. 34 aspirants indicated interest to contest for the 21 vacancies at the party's national headquarters, but only two of these positions will be contested here, as 19 candidates emerge through a consensus. For some of the delegates here, the emergence of 19 consensus candidates is an indication that the PDP is united, notwithstanding the internal crisis that led to the suspension of its national chairman, Prince Uche Sekondos. The work ahead is to rescue this country, the work around is to turn this country around. And you can't do that without a united party. And what we have shown today to Nigerians is that we have a united party, we see the importance of the responsibility before us, and we are ready and determined to turn this country around. You can see the chairman position and remaining chair, or remaining seat is based on all consensus. There are no tussle, no argument, so PDP is united. Delegates and other members of the PDP look forward in anticipation to an outcome that will define the course of the party through the next general election in 2023. Let's go live to Abuja, where our political correspondent, Sheung Okimbaloye, gives us a situation report of the PDP National Convention. Thank you so much, Melina, and welcome to the Eagle Square in the nation's capital, Abuja. Well, it does look so much like what the PDP predicted, an exercise that might last into the early hours of Sunday, the 31st day of October 2000. And 21 and so what is happening right now is voting is still ongoing uh, we have states like Ogun and Niger that are ongo uh, conducting they are putting in their ballot the delegates are voting as we speak it's an exercise where we had almost 21 states and 21 positions that are up for consensus and about three or so positions that are now being contested for and that is the reason why we're seeing a situation where that has been subjected to voting. But uh, largely, what we're seeing is a festival-like mood here at the Eagle Square. The town is abuzz. Anyone who is familiar with Abuja, the nation's capital, on Saturday, on a weekend, we see that things have changed. Barricaded part of the city, 
uh, vehicular movement restricted to some point. Security is heavy right here at the Eagle Square, telling you of how critical this is in the Nigeria political and democratic dispensation or scheme. But tonight, let's get a sense of what this means for the People's Democratic Party and what we may be expecting in the coming hours. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the governor of Bayelsa State and the vice chairman of the PDP National Convention Committee, Senator Doye Diri joins us on the news at 10. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight on the news at 10. Th thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Give us a sense of when this exercise might end. What should we be expecting uh, in the coming hours? Uh, under normal circumstances, uh, this exercise, if all positions were contested for, uh, should have ended about late uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Uh, but for this convention, uh, we have only precisely three positions that are being contested for. And others are uh, more of an affirmation. And so I hope and believe that uh, in the next uh, three or four hours, uh, we should be able to conclude proceedings in the Eagle Square. I know there are a lot of expectations from your party. Some of the leaders of the party have come onto the stage to speak about what this means for the PDP. Uh, how cohesive is the party right now, considering the attendance today and the expectations and the hope, the aspiration that you've seen uh, from the, uh, the delegates and the leaders today? Uh, sure, you will agree with me that uh, uh, Nigerians are looking up to the PDP uh, to see the other side of governance again. And uh, for us as a party, this is not the time uh, to bicker, this is not the time uh, to factionalize. And so uh, we decided to build consensus. And for us in the PDP, uh, we owe Nigerians uh, a lot at this time of development. Uh, we need to bring Nigeria once again to be united as a country. We need to affect the economic growth of our, of our country. And there is no other party that can actually uh, contest with the ruling uh, APC uh, besides the PDP. And so having that at the back of our minds, uh, each and every member of the PDP, uh, both the leadership and the followership, believes in one thing, we must be united so as to uproot the APC come 2023. I know this national convention is very important for your party. But uh, quickly, if you can tell us, and I know you might be in a good position to tell us, we didn't quite see a few leaders of the party. Former president is not here. Former vice president is not here. Is there any explanation for that? Well, for the former president, who uh, precisely is uh, from my state, uh, I had some conversation with him uh, just yesterday, and uh, he had some... Uh, uh, hitherto uh, schedules that took him out of the country and uh, I briefed the leadership of the PDP about that and so for the former president I am very sure that he's still a member of PDP I'm sure that uh, wherever he is is wishing this convention ends successfully Governor Doye Diri thank you so much for your time on the news at 10 we sincerely thank you for that thank you Cheryl the lights are on right now, meaning that it's night here at the Eagle Square. The exercise has uh, taken us up to this point, and the expectations are that the voting will conclude in the next few hours, and the leadership of the PDP will get a new guard that will steer the affairs for another four years. But we're here to monitor the proceedings. And it's back to you, Melinda. Our political correspondent, Sheung Okimbalo, you're giving us all those details. Now you can trust Channel Television to bring you up to speed with the latest on the PDP convention. Now in part two, after the break, APC ramps up campaign for its candidates ahead of the governorship election in Anambra State. Plus, 
Attorney General and Minister of Justice denies involvement in the siege to the Abuja home of Supreme Court Justice Mary Odili. That's in a moment. Join us again. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. People's Democratic Party holds its national convention in Abuja. Leaders say event signals the relaunching of the party into reckoning. Police kill five gunmen after attempting to attack the Anambra State Joint Security Forces during a show of force in Idemili's South Local Government Area. Outrage trail seized to the Abuja home of Supreme Court Justice Mary Odili. Attorney General and Minister of Justice denies involvement, orders investigation as Nigeria Bar Association vows to take action. And three people shot dead in Sudan as thousands protest Monday's military coup, demanding a return to civilian rule. In Anambra State, 27 ward chairmen of the All Progressives Grand Alliance and their supporters in Urumba North and South local government area have defected to the All Progressive Congress, APC, ahead of the governorship elections in the state. The APC received the defectors while campaigning for its governorship candidate, Senator Andy Uba, in those areas. Speaking at the event, the Deputy Director General of his campaign organization says the decision to defect from ABGA to the APC is a wise one. The campaign train of the All Progressives Congress candidate for the Anambra State Governorship election, Anduba, is still on the move, and this time it's in Urumba South local government area of the state. <laughs> But first, the team makes a brief stop at the palace of the traditional ruler of Umunzi community to solicit the blessing of the monarch and his council of chiefs. The team thereafter continues its journey to Urumba South local government, where it is received by a massive crowd. At the event, 27 defecting ward chairmen of the All Progressives Grand Alliance and their supporters are welcome to the APC. Repositioning of Anambra State, reinventing of Anambra State, and rebuilding the future of our great state, Anambra State. Rapid infrastructure development. The APC governorship candidate is pleased with the rate of defection from other parties into its fold. A federal lawmaker in the Green Chamber and a party chieftain resound their confidence for Senator Anduba. We need to make Anambra the roads are bad. We need to give empowerment to the youths, we need to give empowerment to the women, we need to give empowerment to the people so that the people know that there's a government on ground. If Andy Uba gets to the government house, Agboka, we know that there will be a great change in Anambra State. I'm here to support a friend. Like I said before, I've known Andy for over 20 years. So I'm here to support him. One, I know his antecedents. And like I said before, we have tried uh, lawyers, doctors, and technocrats. Some of them failed. Let us try a core politician. Who knows the terrain? As far as I'm concerned, he has been in politics for a long time, so he knows the terrain. <laughs> The All Progressives Congress says Orumba North and South local government areas are its strongholds and so the party is assured of total support from the area at the polls. Staying in Anambra State, five gunmen have paid heavily for attempting to attack the convoy of the state joint security forces while conducting a show of force in Idemili South local government area. The team, led by Commissioner of Police, Echeng Echeng, says the force is ready to prevent any breakdown of law and order during and after the elections.
What began as a show of force by joint security operatives in Anambra State ahead of the governorship election turned into a gun battle that took the security agencies by surprise. The movement, which started out peacefully, took a different turn when the convoy arrived at the Nobi Junction, where armed men in two vehicles opened fire on them. The officers take their positions with a team lead and state commission of police issuing commands. The shooting continues with the force showing enormous gallantry. Traders, transporters, passers-by take cover in fear, praying the force wins this battle. It's safe to say their prayers are answered as five armed men are gunned down with vehicles containing gallons of fuel recovered. Any reasonable person will not come down to attack a convoy like this made up of the military, the police, the civil defense and every other person in it. And uh, I think they paid heavily for that attempt. Meanwhile, there was another attack in Umunze, this time on men of the DSS, which was also repelled. The Commission of Police reassures the people that security operatives are on high alert to tackle any breach of peace in the state. We are going to dominate all the towns and the villages of Anambra State. We are out from Oka, we went to Nucha, through Nobi, and we are here in uh, Omozi right now. It is meant to build confidence on the people, to tell them that we are on ground and that uh, they can come out and exercise their franchise uh, come 6th of November. It's a week to the Anambra governorship election, and the police say this uncommon display of bravery by its operatives is confirmation that the force has dominated towns and villages in the state to ensure a peaceful election process. To other stories now, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, has distanced himself from the siege laid on the home of Supreme Court Justice Mary Odili. In a statement released by his office, the AGF says the clarification became necessary to dismiss publications depicting an untidy process that did not come from the Attorney General. He also notes that there was nothing called joint panel recovery under the Ministry of Justice in the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, and by extension, the entire Federal Ministry of Justice. According to him, what is obtainable is the Assets Recovery and Management Unit, which does not include sting operations. The statement further explains that the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice has since reached out to relevant authorities for a wider investigation on the matter for necessary actions leading to the prosecution of anyone found culpable. For the Nigeria Bar Association, the action of the security operatives at the home of Justice Odili stands condemned. In a statement by its president, Ulumide Apata, the NBA vowed that it will no longer allow this to continue. It states that actions such as this undermines the rule of law and sets the country back. According to the NBA, to be clear, last night's event is an affront on the judiciary and grossly undermines the democracy that we profess. The NBA president vowed to convene an emer emergency meeting of his National Executive Committee solely to discuss this issue and take a stand on behalf of the body. He also promised to lead a delegation to the AGF and relevant agencies, security agencies, to seek clarification on the circumstances surrounding the incident. Meanwhile, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mike Ozekume, is demanding a public apology from security operatives who laid siege to the home of Justice Odili. Speaking to Channel's television in Abuja, Mr. Ozekume, who is a counsel to the Peter Odili family, describes the siege as a disgrace and wants the federal government to identify those behind the act. The search warrant did not carry any name of any person. He didn't say Justice Mary Peter Odili. He didn't say the husband, Dr. Peter Odili. He just said number nine, Imo Street. Meanwhile, 
the very address of Justice Odili is not no Banai Imo Street. Who were the persons? They did not put a single name. What address? You got the wrong address. So there's this theory, therefore, that it could have been a clear case of genuine mistaken identity. I only hope so. But the other theory, which I seem to want to believe more because of the activities of this government, the antecedents, is that it was politically motivated. So I believe it was done to embarrass them. But for whatever it was done, it was a shame to this country. If they now find that it was an erroneous entry, and that it was a mistake, for God's sake, let them do Nigerians and Nigeria the minimal of saying, we are sorry. We made a honest mistake. And heavens will not fall. And they will be applauded for it. But let them not always pretend that all is well, even after causing great embarrassment. When the news at 10 returns, Nigeria's stock market gains over 969 billion naira in October as month and year to date performance climbs above 4%. That's on business news. Join us again. Welcome back. Empowering women is one of the ways to accelerate nation building and economic freedom. That's the focus of the 2021 Arise Conference held in Lagos today. Organizers say this year's theme is a reminder for women to arise and take their rightful place in nation building. Hallelujah! It's the Arise Conference 2021. I declare open. The 2021 Arise Women's Conference. Me! Dr. Shiju Iluyomade is the convener, and for 13 years she's gathered women from all walks of life with the sole aim of accelerating nation building through the empowerment of women in the society. Revive, arrive. The theme for this year, Revive, couldn't have come at a better time, a time when the world is gradually recovering from the havoc done by the COVID-19 pandemic. The convener believes the period of lament is gone, as this is the time to act and take action. We are women of determination, of progress, of justice, of correction. Personal strength lies in our ability to rise above the rubbles. It is time to be strengthened. Look at your neighbor. If she wants to say anything today, if she wants to say, Nigeria no good, oh, tell her, sip it up. Sip it. And do what? Do something about it. Stop complaining. Are we going to take charge? We must build a strong nation. Each year, the event is graced by dignitaries, and this year, the wife of the governor of Kwara State, Mrs. Folaki Abdurazak, and the wife of the deputy governor of Lagos State, Mrs. Remy Hamzat, are among the dignitaries in attendance. I commend Dr. Shiju Iluyamade and indeed the entire Arise Women team for the good works of sustaining this conversation on women inclusion and ensuring that women thrive in our society. The message to us is clear. This is the theme for us to revive and be conscious of our roles, responsibilities, and duties. Enough of our slumber or our sleep. Stop, zip up, do something about it. Beyond all that was said here, the goal is for those who attended the event, both physically and virtually, to go away with one thing on their minds, and that's to quit complaining and impact their world positively. Ovialza Skill Acquisition Center, based in the nation's capital of Buja, has graduated a total of 15 students from different departments ranging from tailoring, pastry making, makeup, photography, bead making and much more. According to the Chief Executive Officer and Founder, Mrs. Ovialza Yunusa, the first batch of students who just completed a three-month course will be connected to the larger society where the skills learned will be put to good use.
For the past three months, these young persons have been trained in different vocational skills at the Ova Oiza Skills Acquisition Center in Abuja. Aside the tailoring section, there is also a makeup section. The product of their effort is also on display as the first batch of 15 students complete their training. The founder speaks on her passion for creating the center, the quality of service and what's next for the graduating students. To empower youth, empower them with skills. You know, job is not easy to come by. So with skills you can survive. There is a chance of you surviving out there. You have a chance of surviving out there if you have a skill. That's why the skills we are teaching here are those skills that you you come across every day. While advertising OSAC, I don't just advertise OSAC, I advertise the students. And they all know that whatever we are selling here, they not just appear. Someone made it. And they would want to get in contact with us. We don't just want to make money here, we want to we want to create avenue for people to also make money. The road to their success had its own challenges, according to other executives. But how did they arrive at the criteria for recruiting the students? We were a different kind of institution. We are informal, so we try to, and we have students who are not educated as well. So if you indicate interest, if you can afford payment, that's hostel, that's if you're not in Abuja. If you can afford the hostel payments, accommodation, feeding, and then for, most importantly, if your guidance or parents give consent, then we accept you. So far, the journey has been hectic, kind of. But the picture outside is fine, but there has been so much work underneath the whole picture outside here. The students who went through a three-month course on information technology sheds more light on her experience and recommendations. Having been here for three months, I've gone far in getting what I came here for, so it's been great. As the first batch of students launch into the market, many expect that they will become role models for intending students, bringing more referrals for Ova Oiza Skills Acquisition Center. The Anambra State Government has commissioned the International Passenger and Cargo Airport to Mary after several attempts to make the project a reality. Governor Willie Obiano says the airport, completed in three months, has been certified by the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, and is done without borrowing a dime from any quarters. No wrong way, no wrong way in Nigeria, except you combine local and international, has a, has a, a tarmac as big as this. After months of rigorous way, construction work, the Anambra the International Passenger and Cargo Airport, Umweri, has now been completed, with approvals given each step of the way by the relevant regulatory bodies. And today, the government and people of Anambra State have come for the commissioning, marking the commencement of commercial operations. It is a day of excitement and a day for speeches ahead of the November 6th governorship election. The Commissioner for Works chronicles the events leading to this commissioning. This airport, this is the 20th month we are on this site. And this airport, at 15 months, we were able to do test landing. That tense landing day, three aircrafts landed here. Since that tense landing to date, seven aircrafts have landed in this airport. Federal and state legislators acknowledge Governor Willie Obiano's cooperation with the legislative arm of government, saying he has bequeathed a legacy edifice for the people of Anambra, a major commercial hub with one of the biggest markets in sub-Saharan Africa, the Onitsha main market. The leadership of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, also speak highly of Governor Obiano. We can never come down, we are conti we'll continue to soar, we'll continue to achieve, we'll continue to outpace our competitors. My prayer to our people, let us shine our eyes. Let us not be confused by the shenanigans of a few persons.
The governor in his address announces that the airport has been certified for full commercial operations, adding that he did not borrow from the federal government or elsewhere for this airport, which was built in 15 months. He also lists the flight operators for the airport to include Air Peace, Ebom Air, United Nigeria Airline, Dana Airline, among others. This airport is an idea whose time has come. We fought many battles to be here today. We scaled over incredible financial hurdles, survived the global lockdown by COVID-19, conquered self-doubts, and flattened our five hills here to construct this glorious runway to the glory of Almighty God. Anambra International Cargo and Passenger Airport, Umweri, is rated as one of the best airports in Africa today. The high point of the event is the cutting of tape, inspection and prayers by the Bishop of Afriko Diocese, Right Reverend Paul Utobu. The excitement of the people is captured as the majestic Ijela Masquerade performs. Now let's find out what's happening in the world of business. Tenye Ola Ali has details. Thanks a lot, Melinda. Welcome to Business News. Investors in Nigeria's stock market have gained more than 144 billion naira this week and over 969 billion naira so far this month as the ball maintains its dominance. The all share index crossed the 42,000 level just a day ago, while total value of listed equities is very much in the 21 trillion mark. Both key market indicators are up by 0.66% this week. Month and year to date return on the NGX have risen to 4.5 and 4.4 percent accordingly. In sectoral performance, all the five key counters of listed equities closed in the green, particularly the insurance, oil and gas and the banking sectors, and investors increased their interest for their key components. University Press led a pack of 46 gainers up by 44.67 percent. GlaxoSmithKline is top on the list of 25 Losers, while Eterna Oil, FBN Holdings and Transcorp are top three most actively traded stocks for the week. About 18,524 disengaged workers withdrew 9.45 billion naira from their retirement savers account with the pension fund administrators in the first six months of 2021. Latest report from the National Pension Commission shows that the commission granted approval for the payment of 5.02 billion naira to 10,619 RSA holders under the age of 50 years during the first quarter of this year as they were disengaged from work and unable to secure jobs within four months. According to the Pension Reform Act 2014, employees who either left or lost their jobs and could not get another paid employment after four months could have access to 25% of the balance in their retirement savings accounts. The increase in Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves continued this week as its gross position climbed higher by $636.61 million week on week to $41.75 billion as at October the 26th. This follows the inflows from special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund as well as and foreign currency borrowings by government. The accretion to the external reserves comes as good news to the country economy as it means the central bank has more foreign exchange at its disposal to intervene in the forex market. Now let's find out how forex trading activity ended at the FMDQ exchange this week. The total turnover of transactions carried out at the FX spot forwards and futures markets increased by 69.40% week on week to $1.54 billion as at October the 29th. However, a breakdown of FX trading at the FMDQ exchange shows that total value of transactions at the FX 
export market dropped by 1.77% against the previous week to $688.54 million. Meanwhile, the Naira dipped by 0.74% or 3 Naira week on week to 416 Naira 48 Kobo against the dollar at the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange window of the Forex market. Trading activities at the bond market was bullish this week as the bulls dominated most of the trading session. Its overall average benchmark yields closed at 8.32% on Friday, indicating a 0.93% week-on-week rise. At the Treasury bills market, activities was mostly quiet this week with a marginal fall in yields while average benchmark yield rose by 1.86%. This comes as the Debt Management Office sold 235.05 billion Naira worth of notes against 150.05 billion Naira offered at its NTB auction this week. Meanwhile, yields on open market operation bills fell by 1.09 percent, while yields on the central bank special bills was up by 1.34 percent. And that's business news tonight. It's back to Melinda for the rest of the news at 10. Many thanks, Tenny. And for the latest in the world of sports, here's Chris Ellis. Sports news tonight. In the English Premier League, Arsenal secured a priceless away win after beating Leicester City 2 0 at the King Pass Stadium, courtesy of goals from Gabriel and Elmer Smith Rowe. Burnley beat Brentford 3 1 at Turf Moor for their first win of the season, while Liverpool were held to a 2 2 draw at Anfield by Brighton. Elsewhere, defending champions Manchester City tasted defeat at the hands of Crystal Palace, losing 2 0 at the Etihad Stadium after they were reduced to 10 men. In other matches, Chelsea hammered Newcastle 3-0 at St. James's Park with a goal for, from Giorgio and a brace from England defender Rhys James, while Southampton beat Watford 1-0. In the last game of the day, Manchester United returned to winning ways with a comfortable 3-0 victory over Tottenham Hotspur. Meanwhile, Liverpool will host Leicester City in the quarterfinals of the League Cup as today's draw handed Chelsea a West London derby to Brentford. Another London derby would see West Ham United face Tottenham Hotspur. Arsenal welcomes Sutherland, the only side still in the competition from outside the Premier League to the Emirates. The games will take place on December the 21st and 22nd. That'll be all on Sports News. Back to you, Melinda. Many thanks, Chris. On the international scene, medics in Sudan say military forces have shot dead three people during nationwide protest against the military coup in the country. The Central Doctors Committee says the three protesters were killed by troops in the capital and Khartoum's twin city of Oberman as tens of thousands demanded the restoration of a civilian-led government. Sudanese police have denied shooting the protesters, saying on state television that one policeman sustained gunshot wounds. At least 10 protesters were reportedly killed in the clashes with security forces earlier this week. The protesters are calling for a return to the path of democracy while also rejecting military measures and demands and asking them to release the detainees. Leaders of the world's 20 major economies have approved a global agreement that will see the profits of large businesses taxed at least 15%. It follows concern that multinational companies are rerouting their profits through low-tax jurisdictions. The pact was agreed by all the leaders attending the G20 summit in Rome. Climate change and COVID are also top on the agenda, which is bringing most leaders together face-to-face, -to -face, the first time in a long time since the start of the pandemic. The pandemic has kept us apart, as it did with all our citizens. And even before, we faced 
protectionism, unilateralism, nationalism. But the more we go with the with the, all our challenges, the more it is clear that multilateralism is the best answer to the problems we face today. In many ways, it's the only possible answer. From the pandemic to climate change to fair and equitable taxation, going it alone is simply not an option. We must, we must do all we can to overcome our differences. And we must rekindle the spirit that led to the creation of this group. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has acknowledged turbulence in the UK's relationship with France as the crisis over fishing rights escalates. After dozens of French boats were denied post-Brexit fishing licenses for UK and Jersey waters, France threatened to block ports to British vessels. But well, Mr Johnson says that things that united the UK and France were more important than their divisions. Earlier, the French president says the disagreement was a test of the UK's global credibility. France says it will take targeted measures against the UK if the argument over fishing licenses is not resolved by Tuesday. And the main news again. The People's Democratic Party's Today kicked off its national convention in Abuja with thousands of delegates from across the country in attendance. Leaders said the event signals the relaunching of the party into reckoning. Also today, there was outpouring of outrage following the siege to the Abuja home of Supreme Court Justice Mary Odili. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami denied involvement and ordered investigation of the matter as the Nigeria Bar Association vowed to take action. That's the news at 10 tonight. I'm Melinda Akinlami. On behalf of the team, good night. <laughs>